Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you, and I am the best reporting on the Eagles. I know you see Carson Wentz. First of all, salute to all my vets. You know, every now and then I got to throw on an Afghanistan war veteran cap. They'll let you know I've really done seen some things. <laughs> but listen, man, I know you see my boy Carson out there with the wide receiver group. Them boys out there having a good time, drinking, building camaraderie. You know what I mean? Uncle Leroy texted me today. This is what Uncle Leroy, Uncle Leroy really think that Sean Jackson going to have like 1,200 receiving yards this year. Seven touchdowns. That was the exact stat line he gave me. So I told him, I said, if Deshaun Jackson got 1,200 receiving yards, seven touchdowns, Carson Wentz threw for almost 5,000 passing yards. I'm going to put him around 4,800. If Deshaun Jackson feasting like that, I'm going to put him around 4,800, man. It's just crazy, though. Let's talk about, let's talk about, you know, the end of uh, mini camp. You know, it came to an end the day. Reports say it was a pretty short one. But I want to talk about some key things we could take away from minicamp. Now, what we could take away from minicamp to this point right now is that there is definitely, and I mean definitely, some competition within the wide receiver group, man. You got that guy, um, what is his name? Mich Mich Michelle, Mike, and I, I, I'm bad with names sometimes. But you got that guy who, who just is, is praising Carson Wentz's deep ball. This guy is saying Carson Wentz throws one of the best deep balls he's ever caught. Pause. He's saying that Carson, you could just run out there as a wide receiver, put your hands up, and the ball gonna hit you on your hand. He's saying Carson Wentz's deep ball is amazing. I mean, Arcega Whiteside, Nelson Aguilar. Come on, man. L listen, we got one of the best wide receiver cores in the National Football League, man. Uh, listen. I don't care who take us light, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna say how I feel about this football team. I got really high expectations for this football team and the receiving core is one of the reasons why. So we can go down the list, man. Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson, come on. Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson, Nelson Aguilar in the slot, Arcega Whiteside in the slot, Mac Hollins is getting healthy. Are you kidding me, bro? We got a legitimate number one and a legitimate number two with one of the best tight ends in the game and Zach Ertz. With, 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 with one of the best second string tight ends in the game in Dallas Goddard. That is, come on. It just don't get no better. To, it, the weapons that they put around Carson Wentz in his young career, man, is just outstanding, man. So, you know, I want to talk about the competition in that regard for wide receivers. Very competitive. And also in de for defensive back. I mean, those are two positions that are key that you need depth. and You need guys to be co competitive and hungry and ready to step on the field at any given time. We got tons of competition in the wide receiver room, tons of competition in the defensive back room. I mean, whoever don't make this 53-man roster, for real, for real, is going to be picked up quick. Quick. Somebody's going to get picked up by somebody else, man. One spot of concern for me is who's going to be our punt returner, being as though we didn't bring back Darren Sproles. I think it's going to end up being Boston Scott. But also I want to talk about, you know, the emergence of Big V. The emergence of Big V, this uh, mini camp, um, just moving him from the tackle position to the guard. How he's just, uh, reports, I haven't seen it for myself, reports are saying that Big V is just adapting beautifully to that position and to that role. You know, getting getting with the nuances and things that go with that position. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's huge that he can step into that role while Brandon uh, Brooks is recovering. That's huge, and they say Big V is looking exceptionally well right there. A lot of people want to say or, or or say he has some struggles at the tackle position. I don't think he has struggles at the tackle position. He was our starting left tackle when we won the Super Bowl. Um, I think he kind of started the season off at the tackle position because Peters didn't come right in. Um, but Big V has always been available, ready when his number was called. So you can't take nothing away from Big V in that regard there. Um, oh, oh, the biggest thing I want to take away from minicamp so the last thing I want to touch on is, you know, Carson Wentz, how Carson Wentz has looked dominant in the red zone, hitting Dallas Goddard numerous times, hitting Deshaun Jackson, um, hitting hit, hit, hit no name receivers, so to speak, no disrespect to those guys. But if you're open and you got a chance, Carson Wentz is giving you your chance to share in the red zone. So our receivers, you know, got to make sure we're ready because Carson Wentz looks ready. He looks ready. He's pinpointing these passes. People, I don't know how many times they said somebody was tightly covered and Carson Wentz hit him in minicamp. That could be a little dangerous when you're taking a shot like that. But Carson Wentz is giving these guys the opportunity. He's putting it where he believed they can get it. And for the most part, they're getting it, man. Um, nobody's talking about uh, too much of Carson Wentz being intercepted too much in uh, minicamp. I think, uh, I can't remember. I think a safety might have picked him off. Um... Something like that, but at the end of the day, those things happen when you throw in the ball. That's not nothing really to uh, 
really to take worry about. You know what I mean? Listen, man. Like I've been preaching, man. Only a rookie will get on, only a rookie will cam up, get on camera, and tell you guys that mini camp don't mean nothing. They just throw it in t-shirts and shorts. You got to build that camaraderie. Why you think the fellas was out having a few drinks? Why you think that was happening? It's all about building and it's all about maintaining camaraderie. It's all about building trust. And that's what happens. That's what happens in the offseason, man. That's what happens during mini camp. Because, you know, they're not going to play a lot in the preseason, some of our um, big name guys. So it's all about what you do when you can do it. Practice, mini camp, and, you know, um, training camp is coming up soon. So we're going to see where this takes us, man. I'm going to let y'all know.